Hey AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here for video number four covering our implicit differentiation, also known as more imp diff. We're going to take a look at another relation in this problem that's a little bit more complicated that might require a few other tricks up our sleeve in order to take its derivative. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Example four in the notes that I give to my students at Avon High School. Let me move my camera down here so it doesn't get in the way of the graph and let's read the problem here together. Find the slope of the graph of 3 quantity x squared plus y squared quantity squared equals 100 xy at the point 3 1. And it mentions that we want to sketch this relation using Desmos and it just happens that I've done that for us already so that we don't have to bother with that because I wanted to just expose you to the beauty that is so many of these implicitly written equations. They graph some of the most um, remarkable things all throughout mathematics. And we also notice that the point 3, 1, it's not messing around. We're not making this up. It is indeed a point that does lie on this sort of figure 8 type of curve. Now, the fact that the question asks to find the slope of this graph at that point implies that we are going to find the derivative. The slope of the tangent line is going to be the derivative. Hopefully that's pretty set with you by now. So how do we go about taking this derivative? Well, if we take a, f a focus on the left side here, we notice that we have 3 times some quantity squared. So if we were to take that derivative using the general power rule, this power of 2 would come out in front and boom, multiply by that 3 in front to give us a 6. And then all of the stuff that's inside the parentheses just stays put. And we lower that power of 2 down 1. I'm going to write 1 there just for emphasis. And then we have to remember to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. After all, that's what the chain rule is all about. Because we have a quantity inside, using parentheses is a very good idea. The derivative of x squared is 2x, not so bad. Add to that the derivative of y squared. Well, that's where we have a little bit of thinking here to do. Because the normal derivative of y squared would be 2y. But since we're differentiating this with respect to x, we have to multiply by the derivative of that y with respect to x. Hopefully you've caught a few of the other earlier videos that introduced that idea, and this is not such a foreign concept to you. We're going to close off that parenthesis because we've completed the entire left side. We move on to the right side, and we notice that we have 100 xy. Now, if I were to rewrite that 100 xy, at least you could think of it as 100 x times y. And that's very important. We have to recognize that this is going to require the product rule. I'm going to let that 100 hang out with the x so we can take the derivative of the first part, which is 100, multiply that by the second part, which is y, and then we will add the first part, 100x, and then multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x, and that would complete our derivative. Next, we're going to evaluate this at the point 3, 1. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. If you remember back to an earlier video, for example, 2, we mentioned that in general, when you're finding an implicit derivative, once you get to this step, you're going to want to get the dy dx completely by itself. Now, that might mean messing around with quite a bit of algebra. In this case, it would require that these two expressions be multiplied together. And that would require some expansion, some FOIL, if you will. And I don't know if we want to do that. I would really like to avoid that, if at all possible. And we are going to be able to avoid that. What we should do here is use the fact that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1 and plug those two numbers in immediately into this, into this equation. And then we would have a little bit easier time solving for dy dx. That's the way that I always like to approach evaluating an implicit derivative at a specific point. So if we let the x be 3, the 6 will drop down. And of course, and then the 3 squared would become a 9. And the 1 that places itself in for the y's position squared would become a 1. Don't need to write that power of 1, so I won't do that. 
2 times the x, or 2 times the 3 is 6, plus 2 times the 1 is 2, and then we have our dy dx there, and that completes the left side. Do the same thing on the right side, let y be 1, 100 times 1 is 100, plus 100 times 3 would be 300, and then we have our dy dx. Now, we still have quite a few things that we have to take care of here, but by and large, the step that we've arrived at is a little bit easier to work with than the step that's above here. Let's go ahead and continue to simplify. 6 times 9 plus 1, well that's 6 times 10, which is just essentially 60. Well, rather than rewrite another step just to simplify that to 60, let's just think of it written here off to the side so that we can just distribute 60 into both of those terms. And that would give us 60 times 6, which is 360, plus 60 times 2, which is 120. And then we still have our multiplied by dy dx there. Left side is about as simplified as it can get. The right side can't really simplify. After all, these are not like terms, so it's not as if you can combine them. So we're getting ever so closer to having our dy dx isolated. You can move the dy dx term to either side. It really makes no difference. If I choose to move it to the left side, I would have a negative in front of it. If you're OK with that, we can do that. Subtract 300 over from 120, and that would be negative 180. And if you subtract 360 over from 100, you would get negative 260. Either way works. Those two negatives are going to cancel out here in just a moment anyway. And then we're finally going to get essentially 260 over 180. Now there's a wide variety of ways that you can simplify that. One thing you could simply do is cross out those zeros by dividing out a 10, but you might even see that you could reduce this even further by dividing out a 2, and we end up with 13 ninths to be our actual um, most simplified slope, let's say. Um, I, I'm a stickler sometimes for great notation. It's not like this is something that you're going to run into some trouble with, but technically the dy dx that we found to be 13 ninths is really the dy dx that's specifically evaluated at 3, 1. Um, and I like for my students to be able to make that notation if you can remember, but it's something that I typically won't make a big deal out of if you, if you forget to do that. Um, does the slope 13 ninths make sense? Well, that's a good question. If you look at the graph, we could probably hand draw in our tangent line as best as we can. It might look something like that. However, I don't think I want to go into this graph and zoom and see if we have a slope that seems to go up 13 blocks and over 9 blocks. That might be pretty tough to do. But I can see that this slope is somewhere between 1 and maybe, maybe, oh, uh, probably one and a half-ish, and, and it looks as if the slope that I have here certainly is positive, and it seems like it does have a, a slope that's in that ballpark, so I think we can trust that uh, we have done this correctly. Now, is there a way to check this on certain graphing calculators? Well, there certainly is, if you have the correct model that can uh, handle an implicit derivative, and I'd like to take a, a look at uh, what our TI Inspire can do here. So here we are, we're back to our TI Inspire. I'm just going to do this on a, a, a calculator scratch pad page. And one of the options that we have um, in our menu is to do some calculus. And I know that at this point in the course, we don't quite know what all of these options will do for us. Some of them we've studied a bit, like derivative, maybe derivative to a point and limit. But if we continue to scroll down, it's going to take a little while until we come across this option called implicit differentiation right here. Option E, right there behind my ugly face. So if we choose that option E, it's actually going to invoke the imp diff command. You can also access this by typing IMPDIF. It's not case sensitive. And we, from there, we could actually take this derivative and uh, evaluate it at this particular point and um, away we go. Well, the way that you have to do an implicit differentiation problem is a little tricky in that you would type in the equation. And so we do that uh, just right off the page. And I think we had something that looks like this, I believe. 
that will equal 100x. Now one of the key things to remember is that you must put a multiplication symbol in between the x and the y in order for this to take hold. Now if we were to hit enter here, I think we're going to get a pretty nasty derivative. Uh, oops, actually we're going to get an error instead because I forgot to finish this up. Whenever you do your implicit derivative on the TI Inspire calculator, you also have to tell the calculator what your two variables are. You know, the calculator is a pretty smart piece of machinery, but it wants to make sure that x and y are both the variables. So you'd always start off comma, go with the independent variable x, follow that with the dependent variable that would be y. And now if you hit that enter, I promise you're going to get an answer. It's not an answer, of course, that we had on our page because we didn't have to evaluate this derivative. And they'd evaluated it and expanded it, and it looks really nothing like probably what we would have come up with if we were to actually solve for the dy dx. So what we're going to do is instead revisit that imp diff line and add that little such that symbol, that such that bar, and I'm going to move my camera out of the way so that we can see all this. That such that bar is this vertical line right there. Now we can start to plug in anything that we wanted to for x and y. Now in order to plug two values in, the first value being x, which of course was 3, I'll type x equal 3, but if you have a second value you want to join that command with the word and. So we're going to use the space bar, which is right here down at the bottom of the screen next to the Z, and then can type in the word A, N, D. There's also a place that you can access that word very quickly, but it's probably just as quick to type. Another space, and then we're going to add the Y equivalent to 1. Now once we do this, we should be able to hit that enter, and we see that our answer does indeed match the uh, answer that we got by pencil and paper. So it's a great way that you can check answers by using your TI Inspire uh, graphing calculator technology. So anyhow, thanks for watching and we will see you at the next video.